Sabbath peace. Sabbath peace. It's another opportunity for us to hear and learn of the word of truth that's given to us by the Most High God. All honor goes to the Father <clears throat> through the Son, whose name is Yahushua. In him lies the only hope for salvation. We understand that it is obtained by grace through faith, not of works, lest anyone should boast and given freely as a gift to all who obey him. We understand that if we do not obey him, it is made manifest or made obvious that we do not believe. In this state, we should expect no good thing from the Most High. However, anything that we do give, whether it be a gift of tongues, a gift of prophecy, or any supernatural experience that we may have, <coughs> it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment. With that said, peace to the saints that are in the room, but no peace to the wicked. The only thing we say to them is repent that they might live. All right? Let's open up to uh, John chapter 7, verse 14. It's John chapter 7, verse 14. And get you a new Bible too. You know what I'm saying? Get that cross off the front of it. It would have to like chop out like boxes of mine. Yeah, but I noticed that thing up, chopping it up. Now, about the midst of the feast, Yahushua went up into the temple and taught. He's in the middle of the darn feast. He went up to the temple and he started to teach. And the Jews marveled, saying, How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? Right? And the way that he had teached <clears> the book. They was looking at him like, how does man know the scriptures? And he ain't never learned the scripture. They like, I ain't never seen him in a seminary class. I never seen him. that would be the equivalent today, right? It's like I ain't never seen this man go to any class. How is he teaching the Bible like this, right? They, he is preaching the scriptures. What else? Yahshua answered them and said, "My doctrine is not mine, but he said, his my that doctrine sent me. is not mine, but him that sent me." If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. And that's why we here. He told us, he gave us the formula right there. He said, if any man does his will, yep. so if any man does his will, then he will know if the doctrine is from God or if I'm just running my darn mouth, right? The reason why a lot of people don't understand the book, they don't understand the, the correct teaching. They don't understand which denomination <clears throat> is telling the truth. They don't understand which church is really for me, which pastor is not just after my money. Which, 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 which religion is the true religion? Should I be a Muslim or, or should I be a Buddhist? Because you know but Buddhist. Buddha, there's a whole lot of Buddhists out there, and they righteous, right? They righteous. They ain't never even met Jesus Christ, but they righteous, right? And then you also got the Hindu, you know what I'm saying? Or should I be into astrology? Should I take it more serious, you know what I'm saying? I'm a Capricorn, right? You know what I'm saying? What's the one with the two weights on the side? You know what I'm saying? I'm the, uh, you know, don't you? You used to be all in there, that stuff, don't you? What's the one with the two weights? And you act like you know too darn much. It's the one with the two weights. I'm that one. You know what I'm saying? I'm a balanced individual. You know what I'm saying? Ooh, you a Scorpio. I know you. They get all into this stuff. So it's like, what should I darn? What should I get into? Right? What should I? Which one should I follow? I don't know. Book telling you the reason why you don't know is you don't do the will of the Father. Right? You do the will of the Father, that thing real clear. That's some crap. I ain't messing with that. All right? But I like reading a darn horoscope. That don't make no sense. That's going to tell me what I All of them right, right? All of them, you look at all of them, all of them describe a little piece of you. So you're going to read one of them that they say is your birth money. You'll be like, oh, that's me right there. Oh, and that one, that one, Tony, for sure, I knew he is a Sagittarius. You know it's all of it's a darn lie. All of it apply to you. What are you going to do when it don't apply? I used to be like that. Stop lying. Right? All these things. But they confuse us and they feed us all this stuff. There was the one girl I used to work with. She is, she is really into it. That girl used to creep me out, bro. She was like, nah, that stuff you reading, that's not it. You know, she pull out cards and all this stuff. I was like, you better keep that stuff darn away from me. I don't play none Shout of that back stuff. to running, bro. She used to read palms and all that stuff. I was like, nah, I don't mess with none of that stuff. We good. I ran into Alpine Village. You remember Alpine? I ran into this lady at Alpine Village. She uh she came out and she is like, I was young, you know, before any of this. She is like, you, you gonna be a preacher? And I was like, I didn't know what she was doing at first. I was like, yeah, my mama used to tell me that all the time. You know what I'm saying? My mama used to tell me that. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. You know what I'm saying? But I was like, then again, you know what I'm saying? All the kids at the church, all the little, little young black kids at the church, they tell all of them that. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, hey, you know what I'm saying? I was like, but she's like, no, no, no. But you, you gonna teach me? I read. I read, I, she, it wasn't palms, but it was, I read futures. I'm a fortune teller or something like that. And I was like, 
you made me very nervous. You know what I'm saying? Step back. It was before all this, though. I was just like, I don't know nothing. My mama told me I don't mess with none of y'all. You know what I'm saying? I don't mess with none of that stuff. These people out here, these people are serious. They know this stuff. You know what I'm saying? The book, a lot of the, the where, where a lot of the Christians go wrong is they look at it and they've been brought to a place of rejecting it for the sense that they know it's wrong in the book. But to, to convince people not to mess with this stuff, they tell a lie that it's not real. Right? Because they, we know it's wrong. It's like, that's, that's kind of a Christian, not, not just a Christian, it's like a worldly thought. It's okay to tell a lie if it accomplishes <coughs> something. Good, right? I was, talking, uh, I was talking on the radio show, and then he was like, you know what I'm saying? All relationships are built off of deceit, is what he is like. <coughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's like, uh, you know what I'm saying? Your wife walk in, and she say, hey, do I look good in this dress? You got to tell her no. I was like, and you will not be, I mean, you got to tell her yes. And I was like, and your butt will not be married long with that mindset. You know what I'm saying? Why don't want you to lie? They want you, they want you to encourage them to get to a place where they want to be, where, they, where you can tell them the truth. Right? You, they want you to tell them the truth. Oh, ain't no woman walking around here looking for a darn lie just for her sake. And if she is, then she ain't ready to be married. Right? It's important for us to be able to recognize that and all that <clears> stuff. <throat> it's so many things that people will turn to a lie and, and, and justify the lie because they're trying to accomplish something that they deem is good. Right? And so that's what Christians have done. They talk about the fortune teller and magic and all these different things. And because they know that this stuff is wrong, they'll tell a lie and say, well, none of it has ever been real. It's all fake. Therefore, don't even waste your time doing it. Their goal is just to make, make sure people are not doing something wrong, but they use a lie to do it. So if somebody experienced something, right, and they sit here, they sit here and they like, that was real magic, or somebody, that was really my fortune. Like, I really did end up the way this person say, I think it really happened to me. And so they experienced something real, right? I really did. Like, on that, that, that one TV show, the man had people talking to their dead, their dead relatives. I remember that old TV show? It was like an old... We're not talking about love and hip hop. It's it's a uh, it's a. Right now, they used to have a show like that back in the day too. It was like you know what I'm saying. He would he would bring it was like a set like more you know what I'm saying. But he'd bring them, then they you know what I'm saying get all dark in the room and all that, and he have them talking to the you know what I'm saying talking to their dead people or Miss Cleo and all this stuff. And so you experience these things, and if you experience it, you're like. That was real. Nobody knew that except my cousin, and she did. You know what I'm saying? It's like, so how you going? What you going to do now? When you got to go back to this Christian and been telling you about Jesus Christ and all this stuff, telling you that all this stuff is fake. They spitting in your face. It's like I just talked to my dead cousin, who I haven't talked to since they died, and I miss her. Right? I just talked to her, and you going to tell me that experience was fake? Like, get out of my face. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't listen to nothing. You're Jesus Christ. All that stuff is fake because you lying. Right, but because they're trying to accomplish something good, they can tell that lie. That's not the route to go. Book don't say it's fake. Book can tell you that thing don't say it's fake. It say just don't mess with it. All right, book don't tell you say it's fake though. It don't say you can't experience nothing. That's why y'all ain't gonna see y'all like catching tongues and all that stuff. I tell people that stuff is not this guy. I ain't gonna tell nobody what they experienced. What real though? You probably spoke some tongues. You probably you probably really caught some 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 type of ghost. I don't know if it was the Holy Ghost. You caught a ghost, though. You know what I'm saying? All that stuff made you shake. You, you really felt that, that cheer. I'm not about to tell you that you didn't experience that. You did. All I'm trying to tell you is that's not what this book describes. And then now it puts a person in a, in a place where they can make a decision. Right? Now I can say, okay, this is what the books say, and this is what I experienced. What do I want more? Right? As opposed to feeling like the book has to be a lie because this person who represents the book lied on me. Right? That's what it's about for us. If we know the doctrine of the Father, if we know his will, right, then we'll understand the doctrine. We'll understand what's being taught. We'll be able to look <clears throat> the world clearly because we obey, right? We know a, a lot of things about this book. A lot of stuff with the book tell us we know. We know not to lie, right? The book is very clear on that. It ain't no like, oh, well, it's up to a person's interpretation. And nah, you know the things they don't lie. You, we know it's they don't darn murder. Right. So we look at all these things. We can go. We know it's they don't commit no darn adultery. Right. All these things. We can go down the list and we can see Well, that part's very clear. He just saying, obey what you know. I'll open the rest of it for you. Obey what you know. Right. It's, that's what that's what's important. It's a lot of when we first got started. We just reading that thing like, man, I don't know that thing. Uh, that's what it say, though. You know what I'm saying? That's what it say. We just went with it. That's what it say. 
You know what I'm saying? Then we started to increase our knowledge. Some of the stuff we were looking at, we could see, oh, okay, well, we got freedom in this area because uh, that was under the law. You know what I'm saying? And even though the law is good, you know what I'm saying? That's not what we judge by. We're going to be judged by what Yahushua said. And we are doing some of the stuff that Yahushua said don't do and keep trying to keep the law at first. You know what I'm saying? We're looking at it like, okay, well, as we came to know, the Most High God was good to teach us the extra things. He is <clears throat> To, to be there with us and teach a lot. The idea that the Christians have that God's just right there and he knows you're doing wrong, but he's by your side all the time. The idea that they have comes when you obey. Right? He'll let you darn bump your head and do all this stuff and all this. Your butt's still going to hell if he allow you to get out of here without, without getting right. But he'll, he'll take you on through there as long as you obey. And a lot of, a lot of our problem is we don't have the willingness to obey. We, we're not even thinking about that. Right? We've been taught so far that you sin. You're going to sin. Everybody sins. And it's pretty much nothing you can do about it. The best you can do is do the best you possibly can. What's the best I can is the most high God said I can do it. If the most high God said you can do it, what's the best I can do? To do it. That's crazy. It's here and be like the best I can is just a little bit under. I mean, I can stop sinning almost. That's the best I can do. And the most high God said, no, you can start, repent from sin. If he told you, the guy who know everything, tell you repent from sin, and you tell him, I'm doing the best I can, I can't repent from all sins, who a liar at that point? <laughs> it's going to be you or him. So where we get it from? If he says stop sinning, and we say it's impossible to stop sinning, who's the liar at that point? Now you got to try to make it look like the man didn't tell you to stop sinning. No, he never said stop sinning. Yeah, I bet he didn't. We ain't even got to talk about it. Where we leave off last week? Whole book about sin. How you gonna kill? How you gonna kill your only begotten son? Books say they love that. His only begotten son. How you gonna kill your only? He that special, right? Only begotten son. They he that special to him, right? How you gonna kill him over sin just so y'all can keep sin? That makes absolute. How what type of hypocritical God is that? It's so bad that y'all sin. I gotta kill my son, and I'm doing it just so y'all can keep sin. That make a whole lot of sense. If, 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 if I'm cool with you to keep sinning, that means it was never really that bad to begin with. I ain't got to kill nobody. It ain't a big deal. I'll just get over it. The man telling you, he's like, man, this stuff is horrible. I'm about to kill my son to try to put a last stop to this, and whoever don't do it then going to hell. It's my son I just killed over this. They keep playing with him, though. They think he's playing. Okay, that's because he showed up the first time. He wasn't trying to fight nobody. First time he showed up, y'all sure wasn't trying to. Jesus wasn't trying to fight nobody. That's what they call it. They call him Jesus. He wasn't trying to fight nobody. He came in there. He was just like, man, all right, man. I got work to do. They, they ain't never read. Who is this that comes from Basra? They ain't never read that. Dripped in what? Dripped in blood. Crimson. I don't know who that's going to be Scarlet. that's coming from Basra. You know where Basra is, right? You... Basra, like, right here. I don't know who that's going to be that's going to be coming from right here. Y'all know the route that we took? We gonna talk about all this stuff in a couple weeks. Y'all know the route that we took. We came from right here, right? <clears throat> we was in Egypt. Then we came through here. Then we had to get a dwelling place down here in Saudi Arabia. You know what I'm saying? Where Saudi Arabia is today. You know what I'm saying? Then we had to go north into Israel. Like that's the route that we took. So I wonder why the books say we gonna go into the wilderness, right? In the end times, right? This is not something that already happened. In the end times, we gonna go into the wilderness, and all of a sudden. Yahushua sure going to be coming from Basra. That's the same. It sounds like the same. I mean, let's say we go to a wilderness somewhere over here. And then he coming from here. It sounds like the same route that we took when we was in Egypt. Right? He going to be coming up. And when he come up, he going to be dripped in blood. I don't know what happened in Basra. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know what happened out here. All I know is when the man left, he was dripping in blood and he going north. He headed towards Israel. They ain't met the man like that. They met the man when he came back. He's like, listen, man, I'm just here to die for y'all. You know what I'm saying? I ain't here for none of the foolishness. I'm just here to die for you. They like that one. They like him like that. And they killed him. Let's see when they get back. You got a whole lot of surprises for people. What, what we got? This is uh, Acts <clears throat> chapter 27. Verse 38. This is Acts chapter 27, verse 38. We ain't going to read all this. We about to wrap up Paul. So last week we talked about, uh, we talked about how, uh, how Paul was on the ship. And the Most High God told him that everybody that was with him was going to live. They on the ship, they got a tempest, what the book called a tempest. So it's a storm. It's going back and forth. 
Something about to crash. None of them thought they were going to make it. A couple of them about to jump off to commit suicide. Paul was like, uh, 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 don't do it. If you get off the boat, you're going to lose your life. Right? Paul was like, Angel already told me, everybody that, that, that's here with me, y'all life going to be retained. Right? So they had to listen to Paul. They was like, okay, for sure. They stayed on. Right? So then they went on and uh, they, uh, they about to crash land right now. And they about to hit land and sea. I mean, land from sea. Go ahead. <sighs> When they had eaten enough, they lightened the ship and uh -huh. cast out the wheat into the sea. Uh -huh. And when it was day, they knew not the land. But they discovered a certain creek with a shore into the which they were minded, uh -huh. if it were possible to thrust in the ship. And when they had taken up the anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea and loosed the rudder bands and hoisted up the mainsail to the wind and made toward shore. And falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship around, and the forepart stuck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken with the violence of the waves. All right, so you see the ship <sighs> broke apart, right? But they still on the inside of it. They trying to get to land right now. So the ship is starting to break apart. Watch what happened next. And the soldiers' counsel was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim out and escape. All right, so this is a boat. Remember, Paul was a prisoner. So this is a boat or a ship that had all types of prisoners on it. So the soldier was looking like, remember, Rome didn't play that stuff. Rome didn't play all that, letting prisoners get away and all that. They're like, no, 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 you kill them. Because the reason why is because as a soldier, you're going to be held accountable for anything that go wrong. So it's better off to kill them than to let them escape. You know what I'm saying? So they're like, let's just kill them all because we ain't about to risk us, you know what I'm saying, falling into this water and then they swim off somewhere and they get away and we get caught for it. So they're like, man, let's kill them all. So they had a mind to kill them. Watch what happened though. But the centurion willing to save Paul kept them from their purpose uh -huh. and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land. Right? So the centurion was like, no, 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 no. Relax. Let's not kill them. Right? What else? And the rest, some on board, and the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. That thing was like castaway. You know what I'm saying? They was all floating on broken pieces of the ship. Some of them was on board. Then they all went to land. What else happened there? Next chapter. Mm -hmm. This is the last chapter of Acts here. And when they were escaped, they went, they knew that the island was called Melita. Uh -huh. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain uh -huh. and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened it on his hand. Mm -hmm. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffers not to live. All right? So the snake bit the man, and then when the people of the land looked at him, they were like, This man got to be a murderer. What they're looking at is, he got to be somebody who's immoral, right? He got to be somebody who is immoral because who just comes to our land and then immediately get bit by a snake? It's like his luck is bad, pretty much. Bad karma is how they were looking at him. It's like, man, that happened to him because you must be an immoral person. Something bad must have happened. You know what I'm saying? So he's looking at him, no doubt. So Paul just get bit. Let's see what happened. And he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Right? He just shook him off. Cut that out. That's how Paul shook him off. Cut that out. Put him in the fire. What else happened? How be it they looked when... He should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. All right? So they looked at him and like, that was supposed to kill that man. You know what I'm saying? But after it was like, no harm, he didn't start swelling, no symptoms. And like, he ain't no murderer, he a god. All right? So now they're ready to worship the man. Let's hear about it. In the same quarters were possessions of the chief man of the island, whose name was Publius. Mm -hmm. who received us and lodged us three days courteously. And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flixy, mm -hmm. to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also watched which had diseases in the island came and were healed, who also honored us with many honors. And when we departed, they laid at us with such things as were necessary. After three months, we departed in the ship of Alexandria, which had wintered in the isle, whose sign was Castor of Pol and Pollux. 
in landing at Syracuse, we tarried three days. Mm-hmm. And him, and from there, we fed a comp, we fed a compass, and came to Rehugium. Mm-hmm. And after one day, the south wind blew, and we came to the next the next day to Putoli, Putioli, mm-hmm. where we found brethren and were desired to tarry with them seven days. And so we went toward Rome. Watch whatever. And from there, when the brethren heard, us, heard of us, they came to meet us as far as Appi, Appi, mm-hmm. Appi Forum, and three and the three taverns, whom when Paul saw, he thanked God and took courage. And when we came to Rome, the centurion delivered the prisoners to the captain of the guard. But Paul was suffered to dwell by himself with a soldier that kept him. All right. So you look at all this stuff. They had a different level of respect for Paul. All right. Through all this shit. Remember, at the beginning, when he jumped in the ship, they wouldn't they wouldn't mess with Paul like that. Paul was like, man, look, you know, what I'm saying? it might be a little too rough. Y'all don't want to go out no more. They were like, man, we ain't listening. To you man, We've been doing it for years. They go out there that they ended up getting real rough for him. Right. And Paul let them know. He was like, listen. I know that, you know what I'm saying, I told y'all we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have got out here, and now since we went out here, we're going to suffer a whole lot of loss. You know what I'm saying? They're like, man, we ain't listening to that stuff. Then, you know what I'm saying, they start to suffer loss. And he's like, oh, everybody calm down. My angel talked to me. Everybody who with me going to be saved. Y'all good. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all, y'all life going to be saved here. You know what I'm saying? It's like, all right, okay, for sure, let's go, because they scared now. Everything started acting crazy, you know what I'm saying? Some people want to commit suicide, jumping off you. Like, nah, keep yourself, we're going to be saved. They finally find out they are saved, right? You know what I'm saying? They, they get on land, they rescue everything good. They, they dwell at this island for a little while, you know what I'm saying, with these weird people that they're dealing with. He get bit by a snake, he don't die, you know what I'm saying? The people start looking at the man like a god. He start healing everybody that's on the island, you know what I'm saying? And after that, they start treating him well, you know what I'm saying? Giving him food, you know what I'm saying? Giving him stuff to make sure he's good. Then they see a ship. Um, from Alexandria, Egypt. You know what I'm saying? They see a ship from Egypt. You know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, hey, and they jump on the ship from Egypt. Then they start heading to Rome. And remember, the whole plan from the very beginning is the Most High God said, you, Paul, will have to suffer for my namesake, and you will testify for the Gentiles. What's the main city for the Gentiles at this time? Rome. Rome. All right? So the whole time, he had to get to Rome. Paul even knew it, right? We went back already, and we saw that Paul was like, man, if anything, I got to get to Rome. It needs be that I get to Rome, right? And now we see that the man is finally getting there, right? He goes, he's wanting through all this years and years of trouble just to get to Rome the way that the Most High God want him to get there, right? That's the type of struggle that we go to, right? Keep going. And it came to pass that after three days, Paul called the chief of the Jews together. And when they were come together, he said unto them, Men and brethren, mm-hmm. though I have committed nothing against the people or customs of our fathers, yet was I delivered prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans, uh-huh. who when they had examined me would have let me go, because there was no cause of death in me. But when the Jews spake against it, I was constrained to appeal unto Caesar. Not that I had aught to accuse my nation of, for this cause therefore have I called for you, to see you and to speak with you, because that for the hope of Israel I am bound with this chain. All right? So he's speaking to, to his people that's in Rome. And he's like, the only reason I'm here is because our people was trying to get me. They are trying, trying to have me killed. You know what I'm saying? So since they did that, I had to appeal to Caesar. I had to go and be like, no, no, no. I want Caesar to hear my, my court case. You know what I'm saying? Since I appealed to, you know, that's like appealing to the Supreme Court. And so he's like, since I did that, that's why they brought me here. It's, like, it's not like I'm accusing my nation of doing anything. I'm not about to try to get my people in trouble. I'm just coming here to defend myself. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, that's why I wanted y'all to come see me. Uh, he want a witness. He's like, you know what I'm saying? This is why I'm good. You know what I'm saying? I ain't did nothing wrong. I ain't after nobody, nothing like that. I want a witness. He don't know, and the book ain't about to tell us right now, but the man about to die. You know what I'm saying? But keep going. And they said unto him, we neither received letters out of Judah concerning you, neither any of the brethren that came showed or spake any harm of you. Right, he's like, ain't nobody there, there telling him. Ain't nobody said nothing bad about you over here. You know what I'm saying? We well, ain't never heard nothing about you. You know what I'm saying? Let's see. Keep going. But we desire to hear of these, what you think. For as concerning this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. Mm-hmm. And when they had appointed him. Everywhere against, is what? We know that everywhere it is spoken against. Everybody for it. They spoken against. He said, of this sect, he said, what you believe, the people, the disciples, you know what I'm saying? The disciples of Yahweh Shua. Everywhere they speak against it. He said, that thing took the world by storm, and everybody's speaking against that thing. 
right? What we look like trying to act like trying to act like we supposed to be in something that everybody respect and everybody love and everybody mess with. Ain't no there ain't nothing indicative. And that's the I mean that's the best you can do there. What's going on there? You got miracles every every other weekend is a miracle popping off. You ain't never seen nothing like that in the history of time. You ain't never seen nothing like that. We got a whole lot of Bible. You ain't never seen it where it's this many miracles going on in this short of a time period. You know what I'm saying? The miracles, it's, it's few. I mean, you could look at you could look at a miracle with Moses, right? A couple miracles, a couple things happened. That was a very short time period, you know what I'm saying? At the most, what, 80 years? Now, after that, we get into Israel. You know what I'm saying? Nothing's popping off. Nothing popping off. A heat, 400, 500 years, nothing pop off. Then a little something happened, you know what I'm saying? A little something, you know what I'm saying? In the corner, not everybody even know about it. A little something happened. Then nothing pop off for a long time again. You know what I'm saying? We build our temple. Uh, you can say a little miracle happened because cloud filled it, you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, something that's special, you know what I'm saying? A little something, not everybody know about that. A little something. You know what I'm saying? And then that thing quiet for a real long time again. You know what I'm saying? Daniel tell a couple prophecies. That's special, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Then, then all of a sudden, uh, then all of a sudden, you get to Yahweh Shua. Then it's miracles. Just every, I mean, turning water into wine. He started off. Ever since then, that thing just all uphill from there. You know what I'm saying? So you're looking at it, it's like this is a special time period. And at that time period, with all that evidence that God is real, people hate it? That's real interesting. What do you, how you think they're going to feel when we ain't got evidence? Right? We, Most High God didn't give us no miracles at this time. You know right? How how, how are people supposed to feel about it? Of course they're going to hate it. They ain't even going to take our stuff into account. If they looked at that and they hated it, how you think if they looked at that and they spoke against it, how you think they're going to speak? How you think they're going to speak against something that we, ain't even, we can't even prove it other than word? Only thing we can do is point to the word. How you think they're going to ignore it? Right? And that's what we look at now. People ignore the truth. They would have ignored that truth too until somebody get raised from the dead. Right? Then they got to speak against it. They're not going to accept it because of that. Then they got to speak against it because of that. Right? You can't ignore it after something like that happens. Most like God know what he's doing. He's setting people up. He told you he's going to set them up. Right? He told us specifically. Go to, uh, go to Romans. Uh, what am I looking for? Romans. Uh, we just read Romans 10. Give me Romans 11. Before we, before we started, I think we were reading Romans 10. So if it's Romans 10, I want Romans 11. You can start at verse 1. All right. Paul finally got to Rome. That's it. That's the end of the story there. All right. He get to Rome. And, it, you know what I'm saying, he fellowship with the brethren. You know what I'm saying? They don't tell us what happened to him after that. But we know just based off of history, the man ain't alive, so he died. Right? He died after that. You know what I'm saying? That's what the most high God wanted. But he was able to testify. We was able to get all these books from him, right? Most of God had to take him down through it, right? Now his words, based off of his experiences and his knowledge that the Most High God imparted onto him, is now spread around the world. A lot of people make a darn mess of it, but his his word, his testimony is there. They be lying on Paul. Bro. Yeah, they be lying. They be lying on Paul. Bro. I know Paul just be sitting there like, man, these people don't know what they darn talking about. They be lying on a the man. They don't know. What they are talking that thing crazy. What we got here? This is Romans chapter 11. Give me verse 1. Be ye fathers of me, even as I also am of the Messiah. Uh huh. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I deliver them to you. Uh, how you get to 1 Corinthians? It oh, gotta be 1 Corinthians 11, right? I'm thinking I'm in Romans. It's Romans chapter 11. My bad. You good? I say then, has God cast away his people? That's what I'm talking about. He asked a question. He started that thing off with a, a penetrating question. What they say, what they say to you, bro? What they say to you when you be like, you know what I'm saying? I think, I think we Hebrew. What they say to you? <laughs> you sure? <laughs> what they say, do it, do it matter or not? Yeah. It don't matter why. Because we all, I mean, Jesus Christ, brother, Jesus Christ died for everybody. Jesus ain't racist. He don't care what race you is, what color, creed. He died for everybody. You know what I'm saying? So you look at it and be like, you know what? Maybe it don't matter. Let me see. Let me see. I don't know why Paul talking about it. Did Jesus die yet when Paul talking? Yeah. Oh, he already died, huh? I don't know why Paul talking about his own people. Let's hear about it. 
I say then, has God cast away his people? Whose people? His people. I don't know who he talking about. He talking about Christians. He must be talking. When he say God talk, cast away his people, he has to be talking about Christians. Let's hear about the Christian that he cast away. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite. Oh, who are we talking about? Israelite. I have no idea in this New Testament why anybody would care about a race of people, a nationality. That makes no sense. Who cares? It don't matter. Jesus Christ died for everybody. Why is this man spending time talking about his, whose people? Israelite. His people. God's people is the Israelite. Don't let these people make a fool. These people can't make a fool out of us. I know what I'm reading. Well, I'm going to sit here and act like I don't know what I'm reading just because y'all are uncomfortable. That's crazy. Then you know what they're going to try to make it out of what we're saying, right? you trying to say the only Israelites can be saved. Shut up, man. I ain't said nothing about the only Israelite can be saved. I just said I'm an Israelite. Just like you say you white. Just like you say you Mexican. Just like you say you German. Just like you say all this stuff. Why I can't hey, claim my heritage? Why is the problem when I claim my heritage nobody else can be saved? These people say Japanese all day. I ain't never said, oh, that means are you trying to say Japanese people can be saying that? Yeah, look at me like I'm crazy. We should be looking at them like they're crazy. I ain't say that. You know I ain't say that. Why would you even jump to that conclusion? The book don't say it. Why do you think I'm saying it? They try to confuse our words and make us feel guilty about who we are. I can't say I'm an Israelite because that's supposed to make you feel like you're not going to be saved. Just because he said I'm his people. That's all right. I'm his people. Why that make you feel a certain way? You Hitler's people. German. Right? You George Washington people, you English. Right? Why I can't claim I'm his people. Don't get mad at me because y'all ain't got no big figure over y'all. Y'all worship y'all God. Whatever y'all worship, y'all Mount Rushmore people. That's cool. For sure, y'all take that. Sinners. Don't matter because y'all mad at mine because my man, the man that claimed me, he righteous. He right. Everything about him right. Don't get mad. I ain't saying you can't be saved. You repent from your sin. You get in there like I will. Right? I don't repent for my sin. I'll be out there like you going to be. Israelite or not, you're right. It don't matter when it comes to salvation. It do matter when it comes to who I am. It matters as much as you looking up, look, looking up on, uh, what's one of the websites? Ancestry. Ancestry.com. You pay all that money to Ancestry.com because it don't matter? It matter a little bit. It matter $250 worth of every month they charge you. Why it can't matter? Because mine free, mine in the book. Mine worth more than yours. I don't need a scientist to tell me a whole bunch of lies. Tell me, you know, you have some Esther ancestors. 75% are from West Africa. Oh, thank you. That tells me a whole lot. I knew I was from West Africa. I put a slave got picked up you. <laughs> I ain't about to sit here and go, I'm going to pay these people $250 to tell me I got picked up from West Africa. That's crazy, bro. And 2% Indian. Stop lying. You know what I'm saying? Stop lying. You knew I was going. You knew I wanted to be. You knew I wanted to say I want to have good hair. That's the only reason you threw that 2% Indian in there. They be lying to these people. And then they don't want to trust the book. That's worse than these diets. They be on these diets. No, you're not supposed to eat red meat. Red meat is bad. It'll give you cancer. Who told you that? A scientist? Oh, okay. That same title told you it was, it was bad to eat chocolate two years ago. Last year, what they tell you? It study said you eat chocolate. It's good for your health. Stop that line. Y'all change y'all stuff every year. This man ain't changed ever. I'm going to eat me some beef. Red and all. I ain't going to eat no pork, though. Right? He said it was unclean. Why we can't follow his diet? They be asking me at, at work, you don't eat pork? Why? They asked me today. Why? You know what I'm saying? I always get quiet. Why? Why don't you eat pork? I just think, I don't think it's a very clean animal. Yeah, I thought that at work. I don't, even, I, don't even, I don't even be getting into the book. I'll be like, I just don't think it's a very... They accept it. You tell them, you tell them, I just don't think it's a very clean animal. I mean, the way it digests, it holds it sweaty, and I read a lot of articles on it, too. I mean, a lot of it kind of confirms it's not a very clean animal. You don't eat seafood either? No, 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 no. I can't mess with the shrimp. Nah, that's a dirty animal. For sure, that thing be cleaning up the ground or the floor. Ugh, that's just nasty. Oh, okay. Yeah, I understand. Hey, they respect that. Then after they do that, be like, you know what I'm saying? Plus the Bible says it's unclean. Oh, oh, well, you know, to each his own. This, that, and oh, now it's to each his own. After that, you respected, you about to join my diet for a second. Long you think a scientist told me. That thing come from God. Oh, that thing ain't worth nothing at that point. I ain't listening to people. I'm an Israelite. I know where my people from. The book speak to it. F my DNA. I know where I'm from. Why I got to feel ashamed? Because y'all ashamed. Y'all ashamed of what y'all did to my people, so now all of a sudden I got to act like, 
Oh, no, I don't want to. I don't care nothing about you feeling uncomfortable. You made my people feel uncomfortable for years, doing wrong. I'm making my, my people feel good, and I'm making you feel comfortable by just doing the right thing. There's something wrong with that. Something wrong with that. Me just saying who I am. There's something wrong with that. Go ahead and keep reading. He said, I'm an Israelite. God's people. Of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. God has not cast away his people, which he, he foreknew. He said God did not what? Cast away his people, which he foreknew. You got you to gotta know that, that second part, which he what? Foreknew. You know what that mean, right? The things beforehand. He said he already knew the. He said the ones that he knew beforehand, he didn't cast off. Some of these just like don't let them tell them no lies. Some of these just like getting they but cast off. <laughs> I've seen these boys on Facebook telling all these lies, doing all these polygamous marriages, smoking darn weed. Y'all but getting cast off just like these Gentiles, and y'all gonna get it first. Book will tell y'all gonna get it first. Who oh, we got there? Grab Romans chapter two for me. Romans chapter two. I still want verse one. Romans chapter 2, what verse we leave off right there? 2. Verse 2? I'm doing too much talking. We can't even get through the book. I sound like a Christian pastor. It's uh, Romans chapter 2, verse 1. Yeah, bro. They say he foreknew. We're going to jump right back over there to Romans 11, too. You know what I'm saying? Watch what he say here. It's Romans chapter 2, verse 1. And therefore, you are inexcusable, O man, whosoever you are, uh -huh. that judges. For wherein you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you that judge does the same things. Uh huh. But we are sure that the judgment of God is according to truth against them which commit such things. Uh huh. And thinkest this, O oh, man, thinkest thou this, O man, that judge them which do such things, uh huh, and doest the same, thou shalt, thou, that thou shalt escape the judgment of God? He said, You think you're going to escape the judgment of God? Let's see. Or despise thou the riches of his goodness and forbearance and long suffering, not knowing that the goodness of God leads thee to repentance. He said, or do you hate the fact that the man is giving you a chance? When he said the goodness and the forbearance of God, what he's talking about is, do you hate the fact that when you did something bad, the most high God didn't just strike your butt down right away? He's like, all right, I'm going to give him another chance. That's forbearance. When you just kind of hold yourself back, he's like, do you despise the forbearance of God? He's like, that's crazy. You know what I'm saying? You think you're going to escape his judgment just because the man is holding back on you? He's giving you a chance to kind of get it right? Do you hate that? Do you hate the fact that he's giving you a chance to repent? Let's hear about it. But after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up unto yourself wrath. When he say hardness and impenitent heart, he's talking about a heart that can't be penetrated. He said your heart is so hard it can't. Most high God talking to you and you won't let nothing in there. Right? He tre You treasure up what? Treasuring up unto thyself wrath. He said, You the day banking wrath. wrath. The most high God. Whole time, that's how y'all have to understand God. The whole time we commit to sin, whole time, most high God just calculating. Don't let these people lie to y'all about God. Don't let these people let y'all think that God is sitting here just, I don't really care. Not a big deal. Oh, when you turn, it doesn't matter. No, 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 no. Whole time, he just sitting there. Okay. Yep, got that too. Oh, got that too. All right. Yep, we got that too. And we think he ain't paying attention. He ain't no God. You know what I'm saying? God don't care. You know what I'm saying? Nobody can stop saying he understands. All these different things we thinking, whole time the man just calculating, calculating, just getting it up. Whole time you building a bigger bank of wrath. When you meet that man in that day, all that stuff falling on that head. Right? Unless you repent. And even if you repent, you still going to have to pay for something now. The books say don't nobody escape. Nobody escape. So you still going to have to pay for something. That's why Paul, all the sin he did in his life, Paul had to pay for that thing the last end of his life after he started doing right. We expect, now, if I turn if I turn to God and I just repent, my life would get real good. Well, uh, no. <laughs> you did a whole bunch of sinning. You still going to have to pay for that thing. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody can escape. He said, God will not be mocked. What you sow, you will reap. Period. Righteous or not. That thing, that's irrespective of you being righteous. You, you can live right, follow every commandment, do whatever you want. You're going to have a tough time in life, though. If you didn't do that thing your whole life. That's how God works. He's a just God. When you get up out of here, though, you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? You earned your stripes at that point. You'll be good. Everybody got to pay, though. You got to pay. Everybody got to get it. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to get it. You know them people that, on they, you know what I'm saying, they sin all their life and be like, well, you know, I'm just going to, Chris be up there, I'm just going to pray for him on his deathbed and maybe he'll turn right before he dies. Yeah, okay. <laughs> most I got the type of guy, you know what I'm saying? If he really had a heart to turn, most I got heal his butt. You know what I'm saying? Nope. Now you got a whole lot of life to pay for all this stuff you didn't did. Right. What you talking about? That's
that's the type of guy you think you about to just skate out of here? You see in your whole life and on your deathbed, you repent when you can't do no more sin because you about to die? Oh, most likely, heal that butt. Yep, get your butt up. We good. Go ahead and enjoy life. I'm going to show you some stuff now. I got stuff for you. You're going to be suffering and poor on the rest of your life, keeping the commandments, doing everything y'all wish you would say on the darn street, asking for money, right? Because he's going he gonna to put you in a bit. you going to pay for it, for sure. God will not be marred. Don't let these people make it. He's sitting there calculating. He's sitting there. He said, you treasuring up what? Treasuring up wrath. What's wrath? What does that mean? What does that word mean, wrath? What do you think of when you think wrath? It's like, it's like a Christian Bible study. You can answer. Right, what do you think of when you think wrath? <laughs> you, know, you know how a Christian Bible study is? You go and they ask you, what do you feel about faith? What does it mean to you? How would it, what does wrath mean to you? Sound like something bad? Or not? What does wrath mean to you? Something bad? What did it mean to you? Anger. <laughs> I think, see, you and man, you a little upset. What they say about God? Uh, nothing you can do to make him more, love you more, make you more angry. He's I, I had the man, I had somebody tell me, they're like, you preach, the way you be talking about the Bible, you be acting like God just up there mad at people. I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm like, all right, um, thank you for telling me I'm doing a good job. You know what I'm saying? Like, what you, what you think wrath means? If the man sitting there, you treasuring up wrath, you think the man just sitting there, oh, hey, how's it going? Man, I'm about to get that butt. You ever seen, you know what I'm saying? You got kids, right? No, you ain't got no kids. You know what I'm saying? You got, we got the kids. They running around, they doing stuff. And you know, like, you in, you in the moment, you like, you talking to somebody. You just in the moment, you can't get them. You see every darn move, though. You see every darn move. He said, whole time you like, oh, I'm going to get that butt. You, you ain't saying that out loud because you're in the middle of a conversation. It's important. You can't step away. whole time you look, I'm going to get that butt. Mad, just like this. As soon as you get there, you smile and they think, "All right, ma'am. All right, well, I'll talk to you later." Get your butt back over here. I'm gonna get. And you go over there, you get that. The whole time what they're doing, they're treasuring up wrath. The whole time they're treasuring up wrath. <laughs> Cause you were sitting there calculating in mind. You just gonna keep on jumping. You trying to give them the eye. No, yeah, no, absolute, absolute, no, and it won't be an issue. And they treasure. They still doing it. Oh, okay, I got something for that butt. They treasuring up wrath. That's how the Most High God is looking. Oh, you ain't gonna listen to my whole word sitting right there. And you you going to church. You think you worshiping somebody God, but you just not gonna listen to what I'm talking to you. I sent you somebody to tell you what you in is false. You just gonna push them right out of your life, ain't you? Okay, all right, I got something for you. As soon as you get up there, the man gonna open up. No, your name ain't. I ain't know, I don't see this. You ain't in this book. Let me see, let me see. You ain't in that book either. Or oh, you in this book. Oh, as a matter of fact, in this book, it's saying you did that wrong, you did that wrong, you didn't repent from that, you still didn't do that. Oh, I know where you're going, period. What the man going to have sympathy for at that point? He gave you a whole lifetime to get that thing right. He's supposed to feel guilty? Please. He treasuring up wrath. Let's see. Treasures up unto thyself wrath against the day of wrath and revelation of the righteous judgment of God. The revelation of what? The righteous judgment of God. In other words, when people are about to go to hell and when people are about to enter into the kingdom. Keep going. Who will render to every man according to his deeds. He's going to render according to every man according to his thoughts. Deeds. According to how, how much effort he put into trying to be righteous. Deeds. I mean, but he tried his hardest and nobody is perfect. That's deeds. what he's going to render. He's going to render it. I mean, he's going he gonna to measure you on the, uh, what's it called in school when like the highest, the best person in class get like a B. So everybody else get measured from that, like that B then gets bumped up to an A and everybody else get bumped up. What's that called? Y'all that y'all didn't have that in school? What was it called? Mm -hmm. Extra credit. Measure on, my, on the scale, I think it was. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? You measure on the scale. You what they had, you know what I'm saying? My teacher you tell me in some class, they was like, man, look, if the top grade, the top grade is where everybody else gonna be graded from. So if I get 80% on the test, that 80%. It's bumped up by 20%, which means every score under that 80% get 20% added on to it. So my 80% becomes 100. That means the person who got a C, that 70 cent, 70 percent become 90. You know what I'm saying? So that C get pushed push up to an A. You know what I'm saying? It was like, that thing's a good darn deal. You know what I'm saying? So we used to be like, you know what I'm saying? Well, just, you know what I'm saying? Just don't, don't do too good. You know, you go to that smart person, you know they're going to be good. Don't do too good. Just, you know, just take it easy. That way everybody else to be cool. You know what I'm saying? Everybody grades just get, get bumped up. That's how these people think God is. Well, you tried, right? You tried. 
I know that nobody can do it, but you did your best. I'm going to go ahead and kick you the rest of the percent of the year. Okay. He said, I'm going to render it according to the scale. According to his deed. According to what your darn butt do, boy. Keep going. To them who by patient continuance and well-doing seek for glory and honor and immorality. He said, by patient life. continuance. Immortality. He said, by patient continuance of well-doing, doing the right thing, who seek what? And honor. Honor, seek for glory and honor and immortality. Glory, honor, and immortality. I want to live forever. These are the things that I'm seeking. I'm being good. I'm living righteously for the, the purpose that I'll have glory, honor, and immortality. Don't let these people fool you by pretending Oh, I just, I just love God so much. That's what he wants. He didn't say because they just love God so much. The reason why we come to love God is because we want glory, we want honor, and we want immortality. If that ain't our goal, then how are you going to say it? What you saying? The book is lying? That's why these people don't stick. They ain't got the right goal. Keep going. Who's going to go to first? But unto them that are contentious and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation, and wrath, er? tribulation, and anguish upon oh, every er. soul of man <laughs> that does evil, of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Keep going. But glory, honor, and peace to every man that works good, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. I think we got to read it one more time, bro. Go up a little bit for me. What's going to happen to the Jew first? The first one. Tribulation and anguish he upon said, every soul. Tribulation and anguish upon every soul. Of what man else? that does evil. That does evil. So if you do evil, tribulation and anguish comes to you. Keep going. The Jew first and also of the Gentile. Who is going to go to first? Of the Jew first and also of the Gentile. Give me back to Romans 11. So now when they run in their mouth talking about, I'm an Israelite. I'm an Israelite. I'm God's people. Who is going to first? The Jew first, then the Gentile. Tribulation and anguish. Yeah. Yo, but getting it first. Boy, what's wrong with you? Talking about how, how, what, what plans is to brag about being an Israelite if you're going to keep sinning? Right. Are you saying, I'm going to be judged first? Most high God going to get my butt first. What do you think? If, if it come first, right? If it come first to the Jews, how much, how much time do you think the Gentiles got to get it right? A whole lot more time. They gonna be looking at y'all stupid, but you sitting there. I'm an Israelite. I'm I'm a Hebrew Israelite. Not nah, I'm still smoking weed. I'm still messing with multiple women and doing all these different things. Oh yeah, I'm a Hebrew Israelite. They gonna see your butt get taken down by the Most High God, and that's when the that's when the Gentile gonna be like, that man's serious. That guy right there is serious. I'm gonna repent. They waiting for that stuff. He been they been pay, learning off of us for years. This whole book about our mess up. Who would go to first? To us. He's going to tell you it's going to be the same game plan. He didn't come to the world and offer it to no Gentiles. He came to the world and said, Israelite, out of all the nations I chose you, you, you are the only nation that I've known. He gave it to us first. He gave us laws and statutes and commandments and blessings. Guess what else he gave it to us first? He tore our butt back down. Before we got law, statutes, and commandments, what we had to go into? Well, no. no, we had well, we had to do that too. We had to go into slavery first, didn't we? Mm -hmm. To the Jew first, and then the Gentile. That don't make no sense. That's how God is. I ain't about to sit here and brag about being a Hebrew if I'm gonna sit here and keep sinning. That thing don't make no sense. I'm gonna be like, no, I'm a Gentile. That's why a lot of these black people don't wanna. They don't wanna claim that Hebrew. So they know. You claim that's so a whole lot of weight that come with that thing. No, I'm a Gentile. Yeah, okay. You still ain't gonna escape. <laughs> Yeah. You tell them lies, you still ain't gonna escape. You still, but you a you a Hebrew for sure. You still gonna get it first, thinking you a Christian. Sitting there, I'm a I'm a Gentile Christian. Your butt still gonna get it first. I'm like, nah, you not. You good. Most I God know what he's doing. I trust the man. I I believe in the man. I think I believe he's doing it the right way too. You ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do no complaining here. <laughs> you ain't gonna hear me say a darn word. They ask me something that's controversial about God. Mm -hmm, that's what he said though. Nah. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh, that's what to say. That's the book say. That thing right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, what else we going to do? Argue against the man? Well, you better get down and lay down. <laughs> Even Job had that sense. Job was like, man, let me, let me just go ahead and be righteous, and then maybe I'll get my chance to debate with the man. What I'm going to sit here and debate with him here for? No, God, you wrong. Nah, that don't sound like a good plan to me. Nope. I'm going to say you right. You, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say you got it all together. 
I'm going to say all these people is wrong. You know what I'm saying? We got a problem. By the time I get there and I ain't figured it out then, we can talk when I get there. But right now, I'm following everything you're doing. But I'm going to talk about it now. The man told me what to do. What I'm going to talk about it now, for? You in the military, right? Your sergeant tell you what to do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Your commander, whatever it is. You know what I'm saying? They tell you what to do. You going to talk about it then or after you do it? I mean, after I get done cleaning. All right, now, now I don't know. Maybe it was a different way you could have done it. All right, well, you know, for sure. All right, I'm out of here. What I'm saying, talk about it before we get to. We out here. We out here. What lives on the line? I got my gun. I'm trying. Lives on the line. And I'm sitting here and argue because, because he telling me go right. And I'm like, I feel like we should go left. Lives on the line. I'm going to break off from my brother. He gets shot. That don't make no sense. We following as a unit. We walking as a unit. That's what we don't get. The whole thing has to be done as a unit. We got everybody trying to do their own thing. How many denominations we got? 33,000, they say, according to some stat. Right? 33,000 different denominations. How does that make any sense? And these people say they all believe one man that's based off of one book, and y'all found that many different directions? How do you find that many different directions? you got to be looking at every page of this Bible and just saying, you know what? That's a new denomination. I'm going to take this word, this phrase. That's a new denomination. Ain't no unity in that. Everybody's split. That's why all these people get killed off. Y'all ain't no, y'all ain't no, you know what I'm saying? Y'all ain't no body. Book already told you y'all ain't a body. Y'all ain't working together. That's crazy. That's why when we talk about the church and we talk about all these people, I ain't going to say the church. When we talk about these churches and when we talk about all these people, they be accusing us, you attacking, you attacking the body of Christ. No, I'm not. I ain't tell you that. But you show me one thing that the body of Christ, how that describes the body of Christ. Everybody disjointed. That's a whole bunch of different bodies. Yeah, I'm attacking them things. They ain't got nothing to do with my God. None. Y'all confusing my darn people. Been doing it for years. Why well, I'm supposed to stand by? Don't talk bad against the church. <laughs> Whatever. Don't put, your, don't put your mouth on God's man. I won't. I ain't going to say nothing about God's man. I'm going to talk about your pastor, though, for sure. For sure. Well, I'm sitting here, little. Well, I'm sitting here. Act like he ain't saying it wrong. I'm supposed to, because, I mean, just because, I mean, he older than you. And he been doing this for years. You know what I'm saying? How long you been doing it? I'm supposed to pretend like I didn't hear nothing. That's y'all weak stuff. I ain't, I ain't weak. You ain't gonna worry about me. If I'm weak about anything, I'm weak about God. Right? I'm weak about God. I'm too weak to shut up. I'm too weak to not say something. That's crazy. I ain't gonna sit here and let these people continue to poison our people and I sit back. And just because everybody say it's socially unacceptable, I gotta shut up. I got to pretend like maybe all this foolishness is going on. Maybe it's right. Nah, not me. I'm going to tell you what the books say, though. Go ahead and keep reading. This Romans chapter 11 is what, verse 2? Yeah. God has not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Okay. What ye not, what the scripture says of Elijah, how he makes intercession to God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and dig down your altars, uh -huh. and I am left alone, and, seek, and they seek my life. Uh-huh. But what says the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee of the image of, to the image of Baal. Uh -huh. Even so, then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. Uh -huh. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. All right. When they look at that, they say, if it's by grace, then it's not of works. Otherwise, grace is not grace. What is he talking about, T? He's talking about the works of the law. Works of the law. All right. He said, he's talking about works of the law. If it's by grace, then it can't be by works of the law. Otherwise, the grace is no longer grace. Why does that make sense, T? Because in the law, when we was in the land, in the Old Testament, there was no commandment that said that we would get our sins erased. We were under a curse. We sinned, we were under a curse. We couldn't get near God. So the Messiah came to provide intercession so we can get near him, to take away that curse. So when we did live righteous, we could be accepted by God. Because if a man is under the law, he might be blameless according to the law, obeying it, but he slipped up before. So he's not doing anything wrong currently, but the fact that he got something on his rap sheet from the past, he's still corruptible in the image of God. So the Messiah came to take away the curse of the law. So that when we did live righteous, we wouldn't have to worry about the corruption from our past life. 
we look at we look at stuff like this, right? Purified bottle of water. For them to be able to label it as purified, they got to meet certain standards, right? They got to have a certain level of of, of toxins and a certain level of, level of chemicals emptied out of the water, right? So you take this water, and I'm trying to get my water certified, right? But somebody just put one drop of little darn rat poison in there or something, right? Just one little drop. You can't see it. The water's still darn clear. It looked beautiful. Look just like the water it looked like in here, right? You can't see it. But they run through the darn machine, and they see that poison in it. How much water do I have to keep pouring in that water for that poison to go away? You got to get rid of the water, don't you? Because, I mean, I can keep pouring good water on top of that water, but no matter what, the poison still going to be in there. And when they run, they run it through the machine, they're going to trace it. That's how the law is for us. We sin, but the law says any man, what is that? Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy 27. It says if anybody does not continue in all these things that were said, then they are cursed. So if I sin because I didn't continue in righteousness, right, and then I'm like, you know what, that was messed up. I will never do it again. And I'm honest. I'm like, I will never do it again. But I sin once. My water's been contaminated, right? So now I'm trying to live righteous according to the law, but the law didn't make any provision to say, okay, if you do that, don't, don't worry about it. I forget about the fact that you sin. It's erased. I clean you up. I purify you. None of that language is in the law. You don't get that language until you get Yahushua. That's when you start hearing about purifying, erasing, things like that. So, That's what he does for us. That's the grace, the opportunity to have our sins erased. So you could have been righteous and blameless according to the law. Yes. But you wouldn't be sin free. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you keep the law and you do it well, but you had nobody to take away that sin that you might have committed a long time ago. Right? Which makes you unsanctified. Unclean. Unclean. All right? Well, that's what the sacrifice did, right? The sacrifice is the opportunity to have something clean. So that's what the law taught us. The law taught us if I commit this sin, right, then I kill this goat, and this goat cleans this sin. That's why every sin I, I committed, it has to be clean, right? So that made me where I can be accepted back in, front, in, in the camp, right? So we, he gave us that to show us that there's a sacrifice for sin. There's a sacrifice for sin. So we have all these different sacrifices that, that provide all these different things for us. None of these sacrifices, though, cleaned us of all our sins or, or, or made a provision for us where it removes a curse from us, right? Because the law, even though it says you could, when you sin, commit to have the sacrifice, it never told us this sacrifice is going to remove a curse or this, that, and the other, right? It was just a temporary type cover, right? Yeah, yeah, like and you so, good, you good. You yeah, have to pay like that you, bill, though. Yeah, you can still. And then if you think about it, we had some sins, right? So if I lie, right, or if I steal, I can get sacrificed for that. What happens if I kill somebody? What sacrifice is there for that? Book ain't never had no sacrifice for killing nobody. Or if you... If I commit adultery. Yeah, commit adultery. Well, what sacrifice is there for that? I'm the sacrifice, right? Book said, you got to die. Right? There was nothing, no, no way around that. There was other sacrifice. I mean, there was other sins where the book would say, you cut off, right? You got to be cut off from your people. Which means I got to go. What sacrifice? Well, how do I get, get back in? You can't. Right? You done. Right? So now what Yahushua is coming to do, he's saying, okay, I'm sacrificing for all those sins. Right? Some sins, y'all ain't never had a sacrifice for. Yeah, you, you couldn't kill a goat. Right? Couldn't do, you couldn't do nothing for none of some of that stuff. He said, I'm, I'm dying for all sins. I'm the sacrifice. A human being. Right? I'm going to sacrifice myself for all of it. Right? And that brings us to a place where we can have union with God. Yeah. He also brought a new covenant. The new covenant, the, con the contingencies of the new covenant is if I die for you and you obey what I say, then I will wash away all your sins and make you like me. Right. So he said, I will put the same heart that's in me and you. Right. I will give you a new heart, a heart that will obey God. Yeah. Right. So this is these are all the promises that came with the new covenant. None of this language was in the in the, in the old covenant. None of this length, so we didn't have a provision, right? So that was grace that would take us from somewhere where we're destined to die if we sin. If we, if we sin, that's it. We die, and that's it. Wait, it wasn't no sin. waking back up. It wasn't no going to hell and burning forever. It was just you dead. That's it. That's it. You dead. You're in nothingness. You don't have no mind. You don't have to do nothing. You just it. That's it. You're done. You don't exist. Right? Anymore. He up the ante. He's like, don't worry about it. Now that I die for you, 
Every single person going to be resurrected, good or evil. One person going to be resurrected to burn forever. One person going to be resurrected to enjoy the kingdom, right? And that's the choice that we make now. Yeah, so so the world would the world would say that's why Jesus died because we couldn't stop sinning. No, you know what I'm saying? In the Old Testament, we got booked to say we got booked to say people stop. John sinning. the Baptist was blameless. Uh, John the Baptist's parents was blameless. Stop Job sinning. was blameless. Stop sinning. You know what I'm saying? David, he stopped sinning. You Stop know what I'm sinning. saying? So that was the issue. It was the fact that they couldn't be taken away. The issue is the sin could not be taken away. Yeah. All right? That's all it comes down to. The sin God called David righteous plenty of times. You know what I'm saying? Most high God told him. He said, you sin only in one matter, in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. Yeah, that's it. Right, the only that's that's out of God's mouth. Like anybody say anything different, you calling God a liar. And you lying on David. Right? How you gonna say the man can't stop sinning when the Most High God? We ain't never ain't no you don't know nobody that ever had the Most High God say you only sinned in one matter. We'll never we'll never hear that. We'll never have no prophet that come up and be able to testify that for us. Right? But they put they they put their mouth against David though. People are crazy. Mm. Keep going. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He sent them to war, you know what I'm saying? Just so he can have his wife. wife. Took his thing. She must have been fine. That was messed up. Caught a glance of that thing off of the pool. <laughs> that was messed up. I mean, off of the tub. Okay. It's Romans chapter 11, what verse? Four. It's verse 4. But what said the answer of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Uh -huh. Even so then, at this present time also, there is a remnant according to the election of grace. There's a remnant according to the election of grace. And if by grace, then it is no more of works. Uh -huh. Otherwise, grace is no more grace. Uh -huh. But it, it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. Uh -huh. What then? Israel has not obtained that which he seeks for, but the election has obtained it, and the rest were blinded. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. According as it is written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear. So he to he's talking day. about how our people are in a position where we don't have the truth revealed to us by God. He said we can't see it. He said he's giving them a spirit of slumber. So we sleep. You know how people are like, stay woke, stay woke. What he's trying to tell us is we sleep. Right? Even the ones that, the ones that's like on that stay woke, so I'd be the sleepest one. I'm like, that ain't crazy. I don't, I don't know what y'all darn Knocked out. They be taking anything, anything that seemed, you know what I'm saying, against the system. You know what I'm saying? They, they, they latch on that thing and be promoting. I'll be like, taking them right hands. Boom. You can't be serious. Sleep for sure. Boom. Knocked out. This boy's knocked out. I'll be like, man, I don't know what y'all be out here talking about. They posted that uh, clip from, uh, clip from, uh, what's that, what's that thing? Hidden Color. Hidden Color. They always lying. Posted a clip from Hidden Color. I had to bust that thing open real quick. Like, yeah, he lying. You know what I'm saying? Moore's. We're here already before yeah he lied. Now Morris was here, right? That thing ain't no lie. Morris was here. That wasn't us though. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people think that we only came on slave ship. We only came on slave we ship. Morris was already here. You right. We ain't the same people. I started busting out them quotes trying to show them that the, the people who lived in that time showed a distinct difference between a Negro, a Moor, and a black Jew. They lumped us in with the Negro, right? But the Negro, they called the Negro. That's that's just, so all this stuff is Portugal and, and Spain and all that. That's why how you get Negro, right? Because that's their language, right? So they look at these people, they see them black people, and they call them Negroes, right? Because that's how they spoke their language. Same thing about uh, how uh, how uh, some say that the the name Igbo uh, came on came along, right? Igbo are the, are the people that we come from. You know what I'm saying? That's what they called the Hebrews there. But the way you say Hebrew in Spanish is Hebreo. You know what I'm saying? Hebreo. You know what I'm saying? So that's how they think Hebo, Ebo came along because they also called them Hebos. You know what I'm saying? So you look, there's a place in America. Um, I think I sent you an article on this. There's a place in America, you know what I'm saying, down south, I think, uh, what was it? Georgia maybe? I don't, think, I don't think it was Georgia. You know what I'm saying? Maybe Louisiana. They call it they call it Ebo, uh, Ebo Landing is what they call it. You know what I'm saying? But back in the day, they called it Hebo Landing. You know what I'm saying? With an H. Because Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? Some say. Some people say. That, you know what I'm saying? Because of Hebrew. So all these things. So you see the different languages. That's how they, that's how they kind of mix these things up. You know what I'm saying? They ain't, about to, they ain't about to tell us about anything. You know what I'm saying? We ain't no darn Moors. They ain't going to tell me I'm a darn Moor. Bro, I was reading that when the Ebro, they were talking about how the Ebro's got caught up in the slave trade and went to all these different places. Mm -hmm. I was reading in Jamaica 
that they called the light skin. They was like they was trying to explain. You know, you read like Wikipedia. They don't know what they talk about. They just like recording information. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. It was like it seemed that the Islanders would call a black person of fair skin, and that they said Red Ebo. Who? Red Ebo. Red Ebo. Like we say Red Bone. Yeah. Everything's like Red Ebo. I was like, that's crazy, bro. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Well, keep going. What then? Israel not has, has not obtained that which he seeks for, but the election has attained it, and the rest were blinded. Mm -hmm. According as it was written, God has given them the spirit of slumber, eyes that should not see and ears that should not hear, mm -hmm. unto this day. And David says, let their table be made a snare and a trap and a stumbling block and a recompense unto them. Mm -hmm. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see and bow down their back always. Mm -hmm. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. But rather, through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to jealousy. What I tell you? He said, who is going to go to first? Jews. So if it go to us first, what's that going to give the Gentiles a chance to do? Space to repent. So through our fall, salvation goes to the Gentiles. He's trying to tell y'all the whole time how the game plan is. That's why we're in the position that we're in right now. Because of our sin. It's coming to us first. We are the ones that got put in slavery. And then what happened when we got put in slavery? I'm talking about slavery from Rome. What happened when we got put in slavery? Gentiles took up the book. They made a Christian nation, right? Jerusalem got knocked down, burnt down by the Romans. 300 years later, what do you see? The first Christian nation in Rome. Right? That wasn't our stuff, but what they tried to do, they tried to take our stuff and they start carrying the banner. Through our fall, they had an opportunity for salvation. No doubt, some of them, some of them are going to end up being resurrected. Some of the ones that didn't get corrupted, but that stuff then ended up being corrupted, and they end up worse than we were. So what's going to happen to them? They're going to they get a pass? No, they're just going to see us fall. It's going to be revealed that we are the true Israelites, right? And at that, that point, then they're going to have an opportunity to repent because it has to come to us first, then it's going to go to them. If they don't repent, then they're going to get it. That's book. He's sitting there trying to let y'all know. He's like, man, the only reason that the Gentiles just getting it, the only reason they have an opportunity to get in through our fall. Otherwise, they wouldn't believe it. Let's see. Let's see what he's saying next. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. And he the, said, if the fall of them be the riches of the world. And the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some of them. For if the casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world... He said, the casting away of them be the reconciliation of the world. In other words... Reconciling being the, of the world. The, the world is being brought to God, right? So if, if by Israel being cast away, being sent off, put into slavery, all these things happening, and then, because of that, the world has the opportunity to reconcile with God, Let's hear what he say. What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? What shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? What's life from the dead? What's another word for that? Resurrect. That's the end, boy. He letting us know. He don't even, I don't even think Paul knew what he was talking about when he was writing this. Right? I don't even really think Paul knew the, the weight of what he was saying. Just like some of the prophets, when they was prophesying, I don't think a lot of the, the books say a lot of them didn't know what they was talking about. Right? But what he's telling us right here is, by us being casted away, right, it allowed the world to be reconciled. When it's time for us to come back in and to accept the truth, then that's the end. That's it. That's the last step. Because it has to go to the Jew first and then the Gentile. Right? So he's just, he just catching us all up. Watch what he say next. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And uh -huh. if the root be holy, so are the branches. Uh-huh. And if some of the branches be broken off, and you, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in amongst them, and with them partakes of the root and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if you boast, you bear not the root, but the root thee. Right? So he's telling the Christians, in the, in the, in the, well, not really Christians. That wouldn't be fair. He's telling the Gentiles, right? He's letting them know, don't be sitting there running your mouth against the Hebrews. Right? Just because you look at the Hebrews and be like, man, they Israelites, they don't even obey their own God. You know what I'm saying? But we obey them. You know what I'm saying? We, we Gentiles and we obey them. This, that, and other. God chose us over them. He was like, man, you better watch your mouth. 
don't get to, you know what I'm saying, doing too much there because the most high God, if he brought them in, if he brought you in and you ain't even a natural part of this, he can definitely bring them back in. That's easy money. You know what I'm saying? Because they Gentile. They time is short, though. That's what he, matter of fact, I think we we uh we missed it. Go back up to uh what verses did you did you just read? 16, 17, 18. 16, give me maybe give me 13. For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. If by uh, any means me let their eyes be darkened. Uh-huh. That they may not see and bow down their back always. Uh huh. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid. Mm -hmm. But rather, through their fall, salvation is come to the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Uh huh. Now, if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and the diminishing of them the riches of the, of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? For I speak to you Gentiles, and as much as I am an apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Uh huh. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh, and might save some. Mm hmm. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? But life from the dead. For if the first fruits be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. Mm -hmm. And if some of the branches be broken off, and you being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them, mm -hmm. and with them partake well, the, the root there. and fatness of the olive tree, boast not against the branches. But if you boast, you boast, you bear not the root, but the root thee. Right? So he's, he's letting them know. By them being casted off, they have an opportunity to be grafted in, right? When you look at graft, a graft is you taking a plant, right? So say this is a whole tree right here. I would take this branch off of the plant, right? So I can take this branch off of the plant, and then I can take another plant that's from, you know, a different type of plant, and then I can combine it with this and wrap it, right? I cut it a certain way. It's a little techniques that they use to do it. They cut it a certain way, fit the plant together, and then they wrap it. What happens is even though this plant is dead or this plant is cut off, and then this plant is cut off from a different place. By putting it together, they two different plants. This one will continue to grow based off of the life that's coming from this trunk. You know what I'm saying? From this tree. And so that's what he's telling you. He's like, you're a Gentile. You ain't even part of this tree. But I can bring you in. You know what I'm saying? I can bring you in. He said, the only way that happens, though, there's no way I can bring you in unless something get cut off here. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, don't be sitting there running your darn mouth. The only reason you in there is because somebody else got cut off. You know what I'm saying? So he's like, don't run your mouth. That's how they get in. You know what I'm saying? This and that's what. Go to uh, Luke chapter 21 real quick. Go to Luke chapter 21. Give me verse. You might have to help me find it. You know what I'm saying? I think it's verse. I want to say verse 19, maybe. In your patience. Possess your souls. Uh, I keep going. I don't know if that's it might go what before that, but let's for? see. I'm looking for a times of the Gentile. Oh. Call my mom. Can you send her a text from me? You see it? All right, because we look at it, they get cast off, we get cast off for them to get on, right? And Yahushua would tell us about all this. He tell us everything that was going to happen to our people. The prophets told us everything that was going to happen to our people. All, right, all the different countermeasures. It might be Matthew 24. Nah, it's there. It's, it's definitely Luke 21. Oh, okay. 21? Yeah. Okay. Okay. 21, 24. 21, 24. What, what book? Roman? <laughs> Yeah, man, so it's, it's, it's amazing how you could be blind and, and, and just completely, like, think you see something. You know what I'm saying? It's just, like, it's, it's, it's just amazing. I, I did the same thing. I told you the first time I read the book, I just knew. I knew I understood that thing. Didn't know nothing, though. 
You know what I'm saying? I read it again. It's like, oh, I had that all wrong. Then I read it again. I still had that all wrong. And it come to a place where you're not, you're not guessing about the book. So the whole time, you don't even realize you're just guessing. You, just, you see something, it's like, oh, I, I think this means this. And you guessing it, and you take that as fact. You have to get to a point where it's like, no, I'm not guessing nothing. Everything I say has to line up with book, period. I went like almost a whole year, you know what I'm saying, where I wouldn't, anybody who asked me for advice about the book or asked me, you know what I'm saying, any scripture, I always had a quote. I had to quote. I wouldn't tell you nothing unless I had a quote from the book. And that's one of the things that got me was like, oh, no, that's, that's, no. So when you go to heaven, what happens? I was okay, let me find a quote for when you go to heaven. I can't find it. And that teaches you. I mean, I can't find it. Where do we get that from? So when Lucifer fell down, okay, let me find a quote about Lucifer falling down. What? Lucifer ain't never fall down from nothing. What y'all talking about? Where's Lucifer? Who is Lucifer? The book ain't even talking about no I went through Genesis a couple times. Like, nah, bro, I was like, surely in Genesis. I must have misread it. Surely it'd be Genesis, because that's the beginning. That's where you first hear about Satan. Right? We're going to hear about how Lucifer had the, all the instruments and had the choir and he was God's right hand man. We're going to hear all about that somewhere in Genesis. That thing must not be in Genesis. Where is it? Oh, I see where Lucifer is. Why it ain't talking about Satan when it's talking about Lucifer? I thought Lucifer and Satan was the same. All that stuff. And so you start doing that. So you start looking like a lot of this stuff is just myth. All right? Where say, where say that December 25th is God's birthday? Oh, don't worry about it. We'll look around fine, fine. They here no more. I don't see nothing about a December or a darn 25th. That's crazy, right? And all that stuff, you just train yourself just to look into the book before you say anything about the book. Anybody asks you anything you want to say about the book, have scriptures to support exactly what you're saying. Not kind of support what you're saying. Not that loose. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying a word that's in this scripture. No, no, no. That scripture needs to be saying exactly what you're saying. You do that for a year. You know what I'm saying? If you talk about the Bible a lot and you do that for a year, I guarantee that thing will line your butt up. You'll be sitting there like, you know what? I got to go back to the drawing board. Because a lot of this stuff, a lot of this stuff is just complete myth, right? What is it? Luke chapter 21, verse what? 24. It's Luke chapter 21, verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. He said they shall fall. He's talking about our people. Give, give, me, verse, give me verse 19. That's 24? Mm -hmm. Give me verse 21, 22. For these... Be the days of vengeance. He said, "These ah, uh, give me verse nineteen. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Uh huh. And when you shall see Jerusalem compassed with armies, he said, when you shall see Jerusalem, he talking to our people. We in the land. This Yahushua, right? Loving Yahushua. He is like, listen, when you see Jerusalem, Jerusalem surrounded by the armies, what's gonna happen? Then know that the desolation thereof is near. He said, it thing about to go all the way down. He said, just know." That the desolation of Jerusalem is near at that point. What else? Then let them which are in Judah flee to the mountains. He said, if you in Judah at that time, you better take your butt and run to the mountains. What else? And let them which are in the midst of the in the midst of it depart out. He said, you in the middle of the city, you better get your butt up out of there. It's going down. What else? And let not them that are in the countries enter thereunto. He said, you outside I mean you away on business. He said, don't even come back. You good. You good. You see it encompassed with an army? You good. Don't even come back. Keep going. He tried to let us know how to escape. A lot of people don't get what he's talking about here. We got put into slavery right here. He tried to let us know, get away. It's about to get real bad after this. If we didn't get killed, we got put into slavery at this point. Right? He's letting you know, if you out, don't come back. If you in, get your butt to the mountain. You in the middle, get lost. Right? Keep going. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are The days written, of what? Vengeance. That all things what? Which are written may be fulfilled. The whole book is talking about us disobeying God and what's going to happen. You got Ezekiel to tell us about it. Jeremiah to tell us about it. Uh, Isaiah to tell us about it. Hosea. Hosea to tell us about it. All these people talk about us going into captivity. Zachariah. Us going into captivity. Do the right. Moses told us about us going into captivity if we don't obey the book. The whole time, he said, this is the time of vengeance. This is the time that I'm making good on my promise. That all things that was written going to come against your butt. What do you think happened? Keep going. Watch this. But woe unto them that He said, are woe unto child, them that do what? With child and to them that give suck in those days. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. 
He said, oh, woe unto them that, that, that are with child. You pregnant? Destruction to you. You ain't going to make it. He's letting me know. If you pregnant, you ain't going to make it. Right? You ain't going to make it. You got a little baby and you, you breastfeeding the baby. You ain't going to make it. You just ain't going to make it. Right? He said, woe unto you. That's destruction. He said, you ain't going to make it. He's letting them know. Keep going. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. And he said they're going to fall captive. by the edge of the sword. So in other words, if they don't kill you, what's going to happen? And be led away captive into all nations. Your butt going to be led away captive into all nations. That's how we got here. Our people was all over. They went into what we now call Europe, went into Russia, went down into Africa, went all over the place. Right? All over the place. And we are made slaves. In Europe, they let us chill a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They is on and off, hot and cold with us. You know what I'm saying? One, one, you know what I'm saying? One year they having crusades. You know what I'm saying? They, you know what I'm saying? They attacking us, and then the other year, you know what I'm saying? They, they kind of let us live a little bit, and they respect our culture because we the people, right? You know what I'm saying? So they kind of let us live. Africa, we had to escape. You know what I'm saying? Them, them people, them, 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 them Africans didn't like us too much. You know what I'm saying? The Muslims, when the Muslims start getting popping. They really had us running. They used to put us in slavery. They started uh, having the sex slaves with our women and all that stuff just going all over the place. It got real rough for a minute. All right? How long that's going to happen, Yahushua? Watch what Yahushua will tell us. How long that's going to happen? And they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles. It's going to be trodden down. Who over there right now? Until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Until the what? Times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. It makes sense what Paul's talking about now. We're going to be cut off for opportunity for Gentiles to come in. And until that time is fulfilled, because he said, what happens when, 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 he said, he asked a question. He said, if the casting away of Israel made for the reconciliation of the world, then I'm guessing that when they come back, that's going to be life from death. We know that happens when? At the beginning or the end? Yeah. Resurrection happened at the end. He's letting you know that's going to be the time of the Gentiles. Y'all going to be doing that until the end, until the times of the Gentiles are complete. After the time of the Gentiles are complete, just like Paul told us, we coming back into the fold. And then when we come back into the fold, next thing that happens after that is life from the death. All right? That's a resurrection. All this stuff we look at. Go, go to Joel. Joel chapter 3. You're going to have to help me out with this one too. I don't remember the verse. It's Joel chapter 3. I just want y'all to see this. We can get up out of here. Watch what he's talking about. See how perfect this word is. It's Joel chapter 3. Give me verse maybe. You know what I'm looking for, right? Because uh, you sold my. Yeah. Um, what is that? Verse 9. Five. Verse 5. Verse 5? All right. Hold on. 5 and 6. We can do 5. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried them. And have... This is Joel chapter 3 verse 5. We'll go to 4. This is Joel chapter 3, verse 4. Yea, and what have ye to do with me, O Tyre and Sidon, mm -hmm. and all the coast of Palestine? Mm -hmm. Will you render me a recompense? Mm -hmm. And if you recompense me swiftly and speedily, will I return your speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head? Mm -hmm. Because you have taken my silver and my gold and have carried it into your temples, my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have you sold unto the Grecians that they may remove them far from their border. Right? He said you sold them on the who? The Grecians. It's prophecy here. He said the children of Judah and who? Jerusalem. And Jerusalem. He said I, you took them and you sold them to the Grecians. But it's talking about the Grecians. It's talking about Javon. It's talking about the people of Javon. Right? That's in this region. That's in this region. Where do you think Rome is? Rome is right over here. Right? All these people the same people. Not really, though. No, it's all these people, right? 
You look at them, you say, you sold them to the Grecians. You sold my people. You sold them to the Gentiles. He said, don't worry, I didn't forget about that. What, how you sell them to? Let's see. Behold, I will raise them out of the place where the you have sold them and will return your recompense upon your own head. You're going to raise them from where? Where the you have sold them. Uh-oh. Wherever we got sold, that's where we're going to be raised from. That's what he's trying. He's sitting there letting us know the whole game plan. Wherever we got sold, that's where we're going to be raised from. Right? And the recompense is going to be turned around. Let's see. What happens after that? And I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hand of the children of Judah, and they shall sell them to the Sabians, to a people far off, for the Lord has spoken it. Uh oh, so then we're going to be selling their kids. <laughs> What's going to happen next? A lot of people don't talk about this part of the book. They don't be talking about, they be looking like those, those, those Gentiles that's in the land right now, because the book just told you, the, the book, I mean, that the land going to be trodden down by who? Gentiles. Until what? The time of the Gentiles is fulfilled. So it wouldn't make no sense for, there's a lot of people that the Hebrews, you know what I'm saying, a lot of Hebrew Israelites that are going back to Israel right now, and they go there every year. Some of them even moving out there. They're like, man, the book tells us that we need to travel back, this, that, and other. Does it really say that, or do it say that they're going to be trodden down until the times of the Gentiles are complete? So now you either go tell, trying to tell me that the times of the Gentiles are complete, which means that we coming back into the fold, which means that we should be seeing the resurrection soon. No. Or you trying to tell me that you don't understand the book. Right? He said, he said that it's going to be trodden down by them Gentiles for a long time. What I look like trying to, trying to get them out of there? No, nah, you good. Do your thing. When I get in there, I'm going to be ushered in. Right? I get over there, I'm going to be selling your darn kids. That's book. What I got to be ashamed of that for? Right? What I got to be? That's book. The man said it. Let's see. Keep going. Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Bear your, beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Uh-oh. Let the weak say I am strong. Uh-oh. He said it's supposed to be going down. There's a lot of stuff they ain't taught us about the book. A lot of stuff that got to happen. He said, prepare war. He said, beat your plows into, into swords, spears. Into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Uh-oh. Keep going. Let the weak say, I am strong. Uh-huh. Assemble yourselves and come, all ye heathen, and gather yourselves together round about. Mm-hmm. Tell their cause, thy mighty ones, to come down. Uh-oh. Here oh, cause your mighty ones to come down, O Lord. Let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, where there will... I sit to judge all the heathen round about. They going all to one area. I wonder why this man going to come from Basra towards Yisrael covered in blood. I have no idea what he going to be doing. I mean, he's sitting here. He, it sounds like right now the most high God trying to set up this big old war. He said, prepare yourself for war and follow me. Come on down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. That's in our land. That's Israel. He said, go ahead, come on down to the Valley of Josephus. So everybody's going to be coming down there trying to scrap something. And I don't know why they would choose there. Maybe because, I don't know, from the place that we were sold into slaves, we ended up making it back to the land. Right? Now, they like, we don't like that too much. Most of our guys said, yeah, come on down. Even y'all even y'all weak ones, let them say that they strong. Come on down. Take our, Get all your weapons. All right, bring them on down. Then... He said, what? And let the heathen be weakened and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat, for there will I sit to judge all the heathen round about. He said, he going to judge every one of them. Keep going. Put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. Come get you down, for the press is full. The fats, overf the fats overflow, for their wickedness is great. Mm -hmm. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. Mm -hmm. The sun and the moon shall be darkened, and the stars shall withdraw her shining. Mm -hmm. They're shining. The Lord also shall roar out of Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. And the heavens and the earth shall shake. But the Lord will be the hope of his people and the strength of the children of Israel. So shall ye know that I am the Lord your God dwelling in Zion, my holy mountain. Then shall Jerusalem be holy, and there shall no strangers pass through her anymore. Anybody that's in the gun going to have to be with us. You ain't a stranger if you obey the law, right? You a Gentile, you obey this law, you ain't a stranger at that point. The book said we got to treat you just like us, right? 
This is what we're looking at. It's prophecy out of the book. Why ain't teach us this in church? Why is never? Why, why we don't be going over this in church? Because the Gentiles taught it to us. They didn't teach us this part. Ain't no different from what we watch in Birth of a Nation. Ain't no different from what we watch in any of these slave movies. They taught them the part of the book that they knew. Right? They looked at the part. They saw they wanted some slaves. They looked at the part that seemed like it justified slavery. So that's the part that they taught to the slave. They didn't know nothing about it. It wasn't like they, a lot of these guys wasn't trying to teach nothing. These, these Gentiles didn't know the book. They wasn't trying to like lead nothing out. They didn't know no better. They look like, oh, this is how you do it. The ones at the top knew. The ones at the top knew for sure. Not everybody knew. They didn't know nobody. They pointed out that verse. Like, yeah, that's, how, that's right. They had them thinking they're doing something right. All right? Good Christians. Got good black slaves. That thing real nice. Land of the free. Whole bunch of slaves. That thing real. It make a whole lot of sense to me. All right? It's time for us to wake up. Stay woke. All right? We got to get to a point where the most high God is, is, is our direction. All right? We're able to look and obey what he tell us to do. That way we understand his doctrine. We understand that this is the doctrine of the most high God. Otherwise, we'll put ourselves in a place where we don't understand anything that he's talking about. Right? We look at this since we finished Acts. Next week, we're going to start Revelations. We're going to talk about a whole lot of stuff, right? We're going to talk about everything. We're going to try to lay out the whole, the whole end times thing, the stuff that all the, a lot of Christians have conferences and argue about and try to figure it out. We're going to try to lay out the whole thing. We're going to try to lay out a timeline to try to figure out where it starts, where it goes. End of the Gentile times. Well, I'll put that in the beginning. Mm. Well, I guess that would be the beginning of the end, right? So I guess that makes sense. So we'll, 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 we, I guess we kind of covered this today. We'll dig a little bit deeper into this next week, maybe. And then we'll build a whole timeline. And we'll try to get as much as we can, right? And not everything will be clear. But as much as we can, we can see what comes after what. You know what I'm saying? See a sequential order based off of what the books say of when things will happen, right? When will a resurrection happen? Of course, not in terms of date, but in terms of what does it come before and after. After the resurrection, what happens, right? Does the book say anything after the resurrection? What about this thousand-year uh, thousand period of peace, right? Is anything going to happen after that thousand-year period of peace? How is it going to be living in the kingdom? Does the book describe anything about when we are in the kingdom, how it's going to be, right? When we live forever, how things are operate? Does it talk about any of that? Will there be only people who... who, who, who are resurrected in the world or will there be other regular people? All right, all these things we'll try to answer. We'll try to figure all these things out. It might take us a while to get through it, but bear through us, God willing, we'll get through it all. Any question or anything? All right, well, let's go ahead and pray out.